we're going to talk about your, your book, English Pastoral and Inheritance. Um, can you tell us first a little bit about how today was? Um, what does your farm look like today? You know, we're going to go back to talk about your grandfather in a moment. But can you give us a little glimpse into, um, you know, how much livestock there is and what the kind of range of uh, farming activities is that you're involved with? OK, so uh, it's a family farm. It was my dad and mum's and before that it was my grandma and granddad's and everyone's involved and even now my kids are involved. It's 185 acres. Um, we have another 100 acres that we rent off other people in the village and in other parcels. That's growing a little bit at the moment. And then we have uh, common, commoner rights to graze on the mountain, a certain number of sheep in a certain place on a mountain. And so that uh, anyone that knows the Lake District, that, that sort of stretches out over about three or four miles of territory in Matterdale. And it goes right to the top of Great Dodd, which is one of the fellows you look, look at, you sort of walk along the tops to from Helvellyn and places like that. And on the farm, we, at the moment, we have 450 sheep and 20 cattle, all of which are native breeds, the Herdwick sheep and Belted Galloway cattle. And we're right bang in the middle of early winter here at the moment. So we're just mm. starting to think about feeding hay to the cattle. And uh, today was a completely mad day on the farm because like a lot of farms like ours, we have to sort of hustle and do other things to pay the bills. So we had a, a school visit here today. So a fantastic group of 30 kids. And we had a... A friend of mine was helping me with that. Uh, it was about habitats and ecosystems for the kids of the school. And then there's a felt there's a fencing crew a couple of fields away from where I'm at now have been building like a new uh, woodland corridor. That's uh, we're trying to we're trying to continue to walk the walk that was in the book. So we're, we're you know, the, the, the sort of eco walk, um, a bit of rewilding and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'd, or, yeah. I'd probably call it nature friendly farming, or trying to get as much biodiversity into the farm as possible alongside yeah. our farming. So we've got six thousand trees coming next week I think and they're going to get mm. those into hedges and edges and all sorts of places and yeah and today was really cold and uh really cold and blue which was better than snowy two days ago yeah would you rather it was bright and cold or uh warmer but raining I'd rather it was bright and cold uh, yeah. mostly, because, mostly because I don't matter it's the sheep that matter and the sheep don't really like the sustained periods of wet weather the cold and dry is fine that doesn't bother the sheep or cattle so it's not really about me, I guess. It's about them. And, and if their life's easier, then my life's easier. Now, how, how romantic is this? Because, I mean, you, you call the book English Pastoral. Um, obviously, everyone says, well, it's not romantic. It's incredibly hard work. But it, it, it also sort of is romantic, isn't it? I mean, um, the way you write about it with, with the love of the landscape um, and, you know, the, the, the respect for the old ways, which is how, how the book begins. We'll come back on to that in a minute. I mean... Uh, yeah, so but if people say, you know, it's not romantic, is it? What do you say? You know, you, no, uh, it's not romantic, but it, it's, you know, I, I'm uh, uh, me and many other farmers are also very aware of the beauty of what, uh, uh, you know, what surrounds us. I, I think there are, there are two crude meanings of romantic, aren't there? There's, yeah. there's na naive, make it sound better than it really is romantic. And then there's, I, I wouldn't say I do that. Some people might yeah. say, I, do, I don't think I do. There's blood, guts, and dead stuff throughout my books, and the people yeah. are less than perfect. There's another meaning of romantic, which I would hope I lived up to, mm. which is a sort of Wordsworthian and tradition, which is that you can genuinely be quite radical, that you think people in landscapes living certain ways matters, that, um, that you might put attention onto the little things, that you might think deeply about your relationship with the land. Uh, you know, there's, this, there's, a, there's that meaning of romantic, and I, I wouldn't yeah, say... Yeah, it's, it's almost sort of, it's, it's, it's sort of almost politically radical. That age of romanticism. Yeah, yeah I, um, a lot of my heroes, farmer writer heroes, are agrarian mm. radicals. They're people who thought farming was vital to our civilization. Okay. And were prepared to fight for quite strong political ideals through their writing. Would uh, William Cobbett be one of those? Yeah, those kind of people. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, uh, the one I, I love at the moment, and I've been lucky enough to become friends with him, he's still mm. alive, is Wendell Berry, the American yeah. agrarian radical, mm. who I think is an absolutely brilliant man. He... Mm. If I've done anything of merit, it's paled into insignificance by his work 50 years ago, where he, he calls it before it even happens, a lot of this yeah. stuff. He says, look, this is this is screwed up. You haven't thought this through properly. Mm. To come afterwards and say we screwed it up is a way easier job than what he did. <laughs> now, let's go back to your grandfather, because we're talking about the old ways. Um, the book's really beautifully structured. Um, nostalgia is the first section. The middle section is called Progress. 
and the third section is called Utopia. So could we sort of just glance through those three sections and um, sort of give a flavour of the book and, and talk about some of the ideas and the people that are in it? Um, your grandfather, you loved as a kid. Um, there's something uh, <laughs> in, in Shrek when uh, the donkey says, I, I like you, Shrek, you've got that don't care thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that seems to be what you think about your about your grandfather like and he's he's he, there's something of um lot rise to candlefoot about the book about your book as well because you're really good at uh you know expressing the, the way that he talks his his idioms and things yep. so um so yeah that's not that's not an accident if you're going to write about fairly fairly work, working class sort of farm people in the lake district who who speak plain speak and use a swear word every other word, yeah. <laughs> you're not going to write a flowery, softly romantic mm. book about it. Mm. So uh, so that was intentional. Yeah. That, and when I was, the first part of the book is, is sort of through the eyes of me age, aged about eight years old. And it's mm. looking back to that time and saying, okay, I, I see what my granddad was doing now. He's telling me about his world. He's telling me how it all works. He's explaining why we live in this old fashioned English farmed landscape, which is, mm patchwork divided by hedgerows and there's six different things happening and everything's in a sort of rotational dance and mm. he didn't use any of those technical terms he never said it was a mixed rotational farm or <laughs> yeah. agroecological or anything like that yeah just, just a farmer and he, he knew the rules he, he didn't say that he was a pioneer in agroforestry no he didn't say that he just laid hedges basically that's what we <laughs> called it or, uh, or you, put a, you put a wall up or you or you clip chip everything like short words sensible concepts yeah uh, not an intellectual not a philosopher although he was quite thought it was a very thoughtful well also yeah yeah, yeah 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 you, you you also say um you know it's incredibly hard work but he knew when to do nothing and he knew when to just lean on the gate and stare and stare at the stare at the animals um yeah, he, he was, and it looks like doing nothing but actually he's getting to know them yeah he's, he was a wonderful wonderful well it was two things that i've i've shamelessly tried to be as well he was a wonderful observer of the world. He would, he thought the world around him, that quite small world by other people's standards, was the was the whole world, and yeah. that it was it was worth every ounce of your attention and your sight and your focus. Mm. And therefore, to spend an hour, uh, to spend an hour on a sunny evening just watching the swallows now they hunt over the uh, the meadow or something, that to him was not a waste of time. That was mm. that was life itself. Yeah. Um, and he was also he was also a fantastic storyteller. I mean. He was, he was other things that are less pleasing with hindsight. Mm. He probably wasn't a very good husband. He was probably a lousy father to my own dad. Um, there's a whole side to him that you wouldn't necessarily want to copy. I was talking to a friend the other day about how dreadful we thought, even though we might not be the greatest parents ever. I think when you look at my grandparents' generation, they were nearly all awful parents. I mean, 